Says, do you think the WWE brass respected you while you worked there? Yeah, I think so. Bruce Pritchard was my, uh, was my boss and, uh, worked closely with Kevin Dunn. There was, I, I brought this up many times. There was a little bit of a problem where Bruce kept telling me that Vince is thinking you're sounding too Southern. I said, really? He said, yeah, just watch yourself. Listen back to yourself and try to get rid of your twang. And I'm thinking, all right. And Vince would always have Bruce tell me the things that were going wrong, but Vince wouldn't tell me himself. And you think he liked to play good cop, bad cop? I think so. Yeah. And, uh, I guess that's changed. I guess he's good. I guess he's good cop and bad cop now. Um, uh, or at least was from what I heard. And back then, you know, he didn't produce me in my ear. I didn't have that luxury that everybody talks about. It's not one person. There's not one announcer out there that had pro Vince produce him in his ear that says they enjoyed it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I never heard that. No, Bruce produced me and Bruce did a pretty good job of producing me in my ear. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I was respected. I think after I left, I wasn't. But I, I think while I was there, I was. Who do you think is the best you ever had producing you in your ear? Like, who was really helpful and you thought afterwards, man, I wouldn't have done as well if it wasn't for this guy in my ear. He was a real asset. I think it was Bruce, to be honest with you. Because Bruce listened to us. Uh, since there's been a lot of producers that haven't listened to us. And again, if you want to really produce, if you, if you want to really produce an announcer, what you have to do is sit back there with your headphones on and listen to what they're saying. That's all. Just listen to them. Don't do anything else because you might miss something and listen to them. And I, I think Bruce was probably the best producer I had doing that. I, I know I'm being silly when I ask you this, but I'm trying to understand when you say, listen to them. You mean as opposed to trying to multitask and do other things or trying yes. to watch the monitor? Yes. Trying to multitask. I mean, if somebody comes up and talks to you, you shouldn't talk to anybody. Yes. And there's so many distractions in the back of the gorilla position. I always thought that whoever is producing the announcers should not be at the gorilla position because there's so much shit going on there. My God, is there ever that that person should be sequestered somewhere else. Right. That makes sense. Watch the monitor, watch what they're watching, know the storyline and talk to the announcers and not necessarily talk to the announcers while they're announcing, talk to them during a commercial break. Right. Uh, so because I imagine it's hard. I've only had to do that one time. I did it for one match, but it's gotta be a little hard to focus on what I'm saying. Tell the viewer at home what I'm saying use my notes, play off of two other people. And oh, by the way, there's a guy talking in your ear that no one else can hear. Right. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not the, I'm not the type that will put up with much bullshit. Uh, give you a perfect example. I, I've heard from other announcers how Vince can, I don't know if he still does this. I don't even know if he's what he's doing now. I don't care. He'd be, he'd be very emotional. Yeah. would be very emotional to you and would say unkind things to you. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I promise you if that ever happened to me, I would have walked off the set. I would have put my headset down. I would have walked in the back. I would have gotten an Uber and left the building and probably been fired. And I didn't give a shit. You cannot do your job. If you're told how shitty you are while you're doing your job, you can't do it. It's impossible to do it. At least it's impossible for me to do it. To get motivated, to be given positive reinforcement, I can do. But to be given like, you know, oh, you fucked up, buddy. You really fucked us up there. Now I'm thinking about how much I fucked up instead of doing my job. I would have put my headset down and walked off. I almost walked off the set at MLW one time. Wow. I, and it, it, it wasn't. It, I wouldn't, I, I wasn't going to walk off the set and leave, but court Bauer was s screamed at us one time for saying something. 
and I'm not so sure if I said it or Rich Bikini said it. And I remember him screaming at us. I remember thinking, I'm going to go to the truck and tell him never to fucking scream at me like that again. I'm fucking leaving. But I, I, I calmed down and went ahead and did the program. But I remember thinking, if he comes back and says something else, I'm going to get that motherfucker. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was I was in a fighting mood that night, buddy. Isn't it funny too? Like I, I like you and I like Court, and it's or it's just funny to me to know that these are two guys who, in a normal circumstance, would never even so much as raise their voice. But right. this crazy pressure mm-hmm. of television and and talent and yeah. storylines and juggling and cameras and the costs are ticking every second. Mm-hmm. It just makes people crazy. Yeah. And that's not the way they would normally behave, but that pressure just gets to people and it spills over. And I can remember what it was either rich or I, I think maybe I said it. There was this wrestler who was trained by, uh, Curtis Thompson. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, it was Curtis Thompson, right? Big cat. Is that his name? Curtis, whatever. Mr. Hughes, Curtis Mr. Hughes, Curtis Hughes, fuck Curtis Thompson, Curtis Hughes, big cat, Curtis Hughes. And we said he was trained by Curtis Hughes and court screamed. Don't ever mention Curtis Hughes name ever on the air again while I'm running this place. Do you understand me? Now he went on and on and on. I'm thinking motherfucker, raise your voice one more time. And I'm coming in the fucking truck because it was a part-time job. Right. And, uh, so yeah. it's, it's as Will Ferrell once famously said, Gator don't play no shit. You feel me? Gator never been about that. Never, never been about playing no shit. That's Tony Schiavone. Gator That's don't me. play. Yeah. Gator don't play that. No shit. No, he really don't. Uh,